Good morning. And welcome as we gather on this day, on this second Sunday of Advent, this time awaiting. Thank you to all those um, church elves that decorated the church over the week. Over the week. Uh, it looks very pretty as we have our Christmas decorations up. A um, few announcements coming up. First of all, in on the 17th and 18th, two weeks, we have our Christmas pageant uh, as part of the worship service, both Saturday and Sunday. Um, so if you have grandparents that really want to go to their own church on Sunday morning, they can come to Saturday, to Saturday worship, um, stuff like that. Um, and so that will be at the 6.30 worship service on Saturday the 17th, and then on Sunday morning worship on the 18th will be the kids' Christmas program. Come and support them. Uh, they're doing a lot of work in these rehearsals. I've seen a part of their rehearsal stuff. They're working really hard to do this. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And I get a week off preaching. So, uh, so there's a bonus in there. You don't have to listen to me for one week. Um, anyway, so we had that. Those are coming up. Uh, thank you for all those that have uh, taken Angel Tree uh, gifts for, uh, for Glade Run. They are due back today. So if you forgot yours or sitting at home or you still have to make that run to Target, run out real early and come back <laughs> before we lock up the place today. Um, anyway, so th thank you for all those. Um, other than that, we have all kinds of other stuff going on. Keep, uh, keep reading all the announcements um, about what's going on. Any other uh, joys or concerns to share? If not... Uh, please, uh, all those that are able, please stand for our confession. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom... No secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
On this second Sunday of Advent, we uh, again light the candles of the Advent wreath, and uh, we're getting our candle lighter ready. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, who gives us courage to start again. You fasten righteousness around your waist and baptize with the Holy Spirit's fire. Bless us as we mirror your mighty fire in these simple flames and teach us to mirror your justice in the paths that we prepare. We ask that peace abound until none hurt or destroy over all the earth. Amen. Amen. We sing our two verses of our hymn and light the candle. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as I ask the kids to come on up. No, no little ones today? Oh, well, that's good. You guys can all read, so that helps. Because I'm going to ask you. All right. What's this say? Stop, right? It's a stop sign, right? Stop signs are useful, don't you think? Right? You think stop signs are useful things? They, uh, when you pull up to an intersection, it's always good to stop when it has a stop sign there. Because if you don't, what happens? Yeah, you end up in a wreck, right? You know, somebody hits you, and you end up in a wreck, and there's too many of them. Now, is this optional? Like, when you come up to a stop sign, is it optional to stop? No. <laughs> My son used to joke that, you, that the... Um, 
that the signs that don't have white lines around them are optional. Of course, they all have white lines. The same way here, here's another sign. Bridge out, right? Bridge out. Is that a good sign to take a pay attention to if you're driving and you see a sign that says bridge out? Yeah, probably a good idea not to go across the bridge because you might end up like in Fern Hollow. Um, so it's not a good idea to go over a bridge that's not out. Those signs are helpful. They're telling you turn back, stop, don't go there. And the reason I brought that up is in our lesson today, you're going to hear John the Baptist tell people to repent. Repent. And you think of that as like, you know, repent, oh, you know, don't do anything bad. You know. But really what the word repent means is to stop and turn around, to go back, to stop and turn around and go back. Like when you see a sign for bridge out, you stop, you turn around, and you go the other way. You go back the way you came. And that's what in, in, in Advent we talk about, and, and uh, in all times during the year, we repent of our sin means we turn back to God, away from the things that take us away from God, and turn back to the things that are from God. Just like when you were little kids, this is where the little kids would have been good. Sometimes, I know kids do this, when you're out shopping with parents, when you were little, you might have slipped out of your mom's or dad's hand and started running across, running outside of a store. Maybe you ran in and you were heading into the parking lot or maybe across the street and your parents would say in a certain tone of voice, stop. And you stopped, hopefully, because there's something about that tone of voice that said, stop means stop. And now, did your parents do it? Well, they might have been a little cheesed at you, but they did it because they love you. They did it because you, they care. They don't want to see you smushed by a car. So they do it out of love. The same thing. God's call to repent is not because God's angry. It's because God loves and God cares for you. He says, stop, turn around, come back. Come back, do what you're supposed to do. Just like that little kid. Just like we obey stop signs. It's for our own good. It's because of the love that God has for us. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, you love us so much. You are sending your only son to be among us, to teach us, and to die for us. You call us to repent, to turn back to you. May we always listen to that voice. We ask all this through the name of your Son, and all God's people say, Amen. Isaiah describes the coming of the future ideal ruler who renewed David's royal line, the stump of Jesse. Gifted by the Spirit of God, this rule will reign with perfect justice. Enmity and danger will be restored to harmony and peaceful coexistence. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 11th chapter. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the, the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, 
In the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatting together. A little child shall lead them. A cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwellings shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. God's promise to include Gentiles within the circle of God's blessed people has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Christians live out their unity by welcoming and encouraging each other, just as Christ has welcomed them into God's family. The second reading is from Romans, the 15th chapter. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement 
grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the, circ of the circumscribed on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall have hope. May the God of hope fill you with the joy and peace in believing, so that you may, be, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. According to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you on this day. In the name of God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the past, in my previous calls before my retirement, I had this tradition in the congregations I served where I taught confirmation to take my confirmation students to worship at a local Jewish synagogue at least one time during their three years of confirmation class in order to expose them to other religious uh, experiences to show, and also to expose them to the roots of our own traditions. Because the ancient synagogue, the Sabbath, the service on the Sabbath, or as they say, the Shabbat service, is the basis of our Sunday worship, the format. Prayer, scripture readings, responsibly reading psalms, a sermon, and prayers for the people, and a blessing. Add to that the meal of communion, and we have worship in our churches. 
They're all familiar elements of worship for us and for the kids when I take them there. The challenge was when I took them to the synagogue is that most of the service is in Hebrew. But uh, conveniently, they have a prayer book that has one side is in Hebrew, the other side is in English, so we're able to follow along. But the Hebrew, being the original language of the New Testament, is the worship language in the synagogue. But one takeaway, and the reason I mentioned, the one takeaway for me is that every time I intended, attended worship in a synagogue, in a Jewish service, is that the worship is centered not on a personal relationship with God so much, or even a relationship, that particular gathered congregation's godly experiences, but more it's about a prayerful expectation and hope for all the people of Israel around the world, of which that particular assembly is just a small microcosm of the larger. I think too often we modern Christians tend to personalize and individualize our faith. We hear about a personal relationship with Jesus, individual faith. We want worship to personally touch us somehow. Concern is about what do I get out of worship rather than what's God up to among God's people. We care about our church and we want things done our way. But faith has always been much bigger than just us. Though faith is always very deeply personal, it's never individual. Faith is lived out in community and in the world, a relational thing, right? Among all of God's people. The synagogue visits came to mind this week as I read in our text today about those that flock to see John the baptizer for a baptism of repentance. With our modern sensibilities, we see this as an individual act. People coming up, going down to the river to be dunked and repent. But our text talks about the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. They were baptized by him, confessing their sins. Not just an individual action. Not a personal choice between me and God. It was a community. It was a nation it was, that was in repentance, a mass repentance, a community in renewal of faith together. Because God is a God of community. God saves and gathers its people together. From the Hebrews in Egypt that were brought out together to Mount Horeb, to the first Christians. God has claimed, gathered, and sent God's people to be a living, active witness together to the love and forgiveness of God. As we look at these Advent texts about John the baptizer coming to baptize for repentance, we also look ahead to John's proclamation of the one who will follow, especially as we spend these days in Advent. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to can't carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Right now, I don't know if you've heard in the news that the largest volcano, active volcano in the world is, is currently erupting down in Hawaii, out over in Hawaii. Uh, I forget the name. But um, many years ago, my family and I were on a cruise around Hawaiian islands. And one of the amazing, awesome things we saw was a volcano erupting and spilling molten lava into the sea. Now, we passed it late at night, 
our ship passed the, um, passed the island where it was happening. And we were standing there on the deck and we looked out and we, and we could see this reddish glow coming down the mountainside and flowing into the sea. There was a sense of power and unstoppable force, hot, burning, persistent. It was an unquenchable fire, nothing. Nothing could stop that until it plunged into the ocean. As I read today's text in the Baptist warning, baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, the chaff will be burned with an unquenchable fire. And it brought images of that river of hot lava pushing down. And I say pushing rather than flowing. It was pushing down to the sea. I don't know if any of you have ever watched volcano stories on Discovery Channel or on other places and seen what it looks like with that lava flow or, and, what it looks like after it's all over. After that lava has cooled, that molten rock has destroyed and burned everything in its path and in its place is left this black rock. It reshapes and changes the entire landscape with a bed of black that recreates in its own image. Baptism in Christ is more than a washing away of sin. That was, that was John's thing. Jesus' baptism is a rebirth in and through the water and the Holy Spirit. It's a reshaping, a, a reforming us into a new creation, a burning away, as it were, of what it was, of what was to embrace what shall be in Christ. It is a new life, just as the breath of God breathed new life into Adam at creation, so in baptism, those that are drowned in the waters of baptism, rise and receive new life through the Holy Spirit and are gathered into the active life of the community of the faithful. Baptism for all of us that profess faith is not an individual pledge. It's not a solo endeavor as much as it is a joining, a joining into that great cloud of witnesses that are among us and before us to be part of God's people and God's mission. Those that are claimed, gathered, and sent to be a sign and a witness to God's love to and for the world. It's a realization that through the Holy Spirit, Jesus the Christ has places for us to be and things to do together. As beloved children of God, each of you, of us, our call to live into our baptismal calls, to be nurtured among God's people, to be fed at the Lord's table, to be sent to proclaim the love and justice of God for all, not individually, but as the children of God together, as the church together. As Paul writes to the folks in Rome, may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the people of God forgiven by grace in baptism claimed and gathered in this place, sealed with the Holy Spirit marked with the cross of Christ forever and empowered by this fiery spirit how do we live out that call as we seek to faithfully follow the one whose comforting yet challenging coming we anticipate this Advent? As daily we can remember the life-altering promise of baptism, we can do so without despair or fear, but of hope as we turn back to what God calls us to do in baptism. We do it 
without fear, but with hope. Hope to the one who has gathered us and the one who sustains us. And I share Paul's prayer and blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.
Let us confess our faith by reciting the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to live for the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, especially John of Damascus, whom we commemorate today. Inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us a vision of creation in harmony, when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companion to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We urge your people to welcome one another as you, has, as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. Especially Gary, Janet, Vincent, Jim, Becky, Penny, Mindy, John, Matt, Nancy, Elizabeth, Frank, Russ, Sally, Jane, Kate and Baby, Joan, Jerry, Jeff, Carol, Gloria, Rona, Jean, Bob, Joan. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You embrace all who have died trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather all our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share this gift of God's peace.
God of all creation, you have made you have made good is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for all the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the part of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you of the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for promises to your people. Blessed are you for you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word of faithful flesh. In the place we betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With his bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We, work, we look with hope for his coming. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this day, day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in grace. Amen. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.